What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're looking at the Sakani 5 inch field monitor and the guys over at Sakani sent this to me to check out and I was actually really impressed. This is a really good display and it's sort of a budget friendly filmmaking tool and I'd say this works best on something like a gimbal, even like those smaller handheld gimbals because it's not very big and it's pretty light. But let's get into it. Starting out, like I said, it's a five inch display. It's actually a 1080p display. It has full size HDMI in and out and it'll actually accept right up to a 4K DCI input. It's a touch screen and it runs on the standard Sony NP batteries. It actually comes with the NPF 550 battery. It's got a headphone jack and a whole bunch of on-screen tools to help you out. Now taking a look at the top, you've got your power bar to turn it on and off. Beside that, you've actually got a menu dial because for whatever reason, the touch screen doesn't really work in the menus. So you have to use this dial. It's kind of like a scroll wheel with a click in it. Inside the menus, you can change basically all the settings of the monitor, like the Kelvin, the temperature, brightness, contrast, backlight, different things like that. Pretty much similar to what the small HD has. Now inside of that menu, you can set up some configurations. There's four buttons on the top here. Each of these buttons are kind of like a hotkey to get to different tools like peaking, false color, histogram, different things like that. Cool thing is you do have the touch screen to do pinch to zoom so you can zoom in, move around on the screen, but for whatever reason you can't actually use the touch screen inside of the menus. Now talking about tools, there are quite a bit of tools on here. You've got grids, you've got aspect ratios, you've got your histogram, you've got focus peaking. You don't have all the same tools that the small HD focus has, but it does have the main essential ones. If you hold down the button, you get some more options that aren't actually in the menus. They're kind of like a hidden feature. So say you want to change the color or the intensity of the focus peaking, you can do that by holding the button down and then going through the settings in there. So obviously this monitor is trying to directly compete with the small HD focus. So I don't have the small HD focus on the table right now. And that's because I usually use it on a C200 to film with. And as you can see, that's what I'm using right now to shoot this video with. So I'm going to kind of compare some of those things because this is quite a bit cheaper than the small HD focus and it might work out better for you if you don't have a ton of money. So talking about the build quality, the small HD focus has sort of like a soft touch material. This is more just your standard generic plastic material. The small HD focus does have touch in the menus where this doesn't. One big plus for this monitor is it's actually 1080p and the small HD focus is only 720p. So you can actually tell that this is quite a bit sharper than the small HD focus. One thing they never included on this is being able to load in custom LUTs. That's something you can do on the small HD focus. And if you're shooting log, I mean, I don't necessarily use it all the time. I have used it in the past on like something like the Atomos Ninja Inferno, but most of the time you don't have time to set up a LUT and you don't really know what you're gonna use all the time. So it's not really that big of a deal not having it on this monitor. This does have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom where the small HD focus has one on the top and on the side. The small HD focus will actually auto rotate if you flip it upside down. Uh, you can do that with this, but you have to manually switch it. Another big plus for this monitor is that it actually accepts full size HDMI versus small HD's weird proprietary micro HDMI input. But on this, you get full size HDMI in and a pass through out. The brightness on the monitor is not that bad. It's actually pretty bright. Uh, it's not as bright as the small HD focus. This is around 450 nits where the small HD focus is around 800, but I shot outside with it in the bright sun and it wasn't really that big of a deal. It also comes with a sun hood. I haven't attached it because it actually has kind of like a double-sided tape where you can actually stick it to this. And then I guess it would leave Velcro. Yeah, it's a Velcro. So I haven't put that on yet, but it's really nice that they include the sun hood with it. Some other things that they include with it are a regular HDMI to micro HDMI and also a mini HDMI to full-size HDMI. They're kind of long. They wouldn't be the best if you were using them on a gimbal or something like that. And I found that this monitor was super light and really awesome to use on something like the Crane 2 or the Moza Air. Um, it does come with a ball head mount, which is another thing. It actually comes with a lot of things. So it comes with this ball head mount. It comes with another mount that I used on the Moza Air that's just a little connector rod. It comes with all these cables. It comes with the hood and it actually comes with the power adapter to plug it in so you could run it off the wall. All right, so that's basically the features and kind of comparing it with the small HD Focus. Uh, some of the things that I don't like, the power switch is kind of weird and kind of cheap feeling. Uh, it would have been nice if it was more of like a button. There's no touch in the menus, there's no LUTs. And like I said, the monitor isn't as bright as a small HD focus, but it's really not that big of a deal, but it's just something I put on the cons list because it's, it's bright, but it's not insanely bright. But the amount of things that I do like outweigh the things I don't like. Starting off with the size and build, it's a really nice built monitor. It's super light, so it'll work well on all the gimbals. Uh, it's perfect on like the Ronin, the Crane 2, the Moza Air, different things like that, where you don't really want a heavy, big, huge screen hanging off the side. 
this is perfect and it's just a nice size for something like that. There's very little lag. It actually has really good viewing angles, which makes me wonder if it's almost an IPS panel. Uh, looking at it from the side, there's no crazy color shift. You got pinch to zoom, 1080p, it's a really sharp panel. 1080p and a five inch display looks really, really sharp. So it's easy for checking focus and different things like that. Full size HDMI, the four custom buttons on the top for different tools, it's just easy to click them on and off. And as I mentioned, it comes with a lot of extra things like all these cables, the sun hood, the power cable, uh, another USB cable, and it even comes with a pretty big battery. The only thing it doesn't come with is a carrying case. But yeah, this is an amazing budget monitor. I was not expecting it to be as good as it is. It's going for about $299 on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And that's, you know, about 200 bucks cheaper than the standard small HD focus setup. And you get pretty much all the same features and the same size. It's got small bezels, it's lightweight, uh, it even takes the same battery as a small HD focus. So if I was to recommend a monitor to anyone, even over the ones that are like seven inch, because there's some cheap seven inch ones, I'd rather choose this any day. Anyway, that's all I got to say about this monitor. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. I'll see you in the next one.